In today's video, we have a BMW 1M, a true 1M. This is not a clone, and this is not a 135 with the 1M front bumper. This is absolutely one of my dream cars. I definitely wanna have one of these in my garage one day. No, this is not my car, unfortunately. This is my good friend Robbie's. I'm doing a full detail on it, and he uh, kindly offered it to me for a full week. So I've had this car for a couple days now, and we took it out in the canyons and give it a little rip on it, and it just feels so good. It's not completely stock, but it's pretty close. It has a stock tune on it. it, has a couple upgrades. So stay tuned, this should be a fun video, and thank you for tuning in. All right, final day with the 1M. We're gonna take it in the back roads, give it a rip, see how she feels. So this car is just so fun to drive. It's basically a twin turbo go-kart is what I refer to it as. The BMW 1M was born 2011. Production numbers were set out to be 2,700 units at first. They decided to make 6,309 units as a result of demand, and only 700 of those cars made its way to the US market. It was $47,000 brand new, and now they're upwards of 60K for a 10-year-old car. Rightfully so, I would still pay 60K. This car has the notorious, legendary N54 engine, producing 335 horsepower and 332 foot-pounds of torque. It has an M button that enhances the throttle response and boosts the torque up to 369 foot-pounds, which you definitely feel. This car is an absolute joy to drive. A little sideways there, first gear, second gear, one of my favorites. Third gear, nice punch of power, 4,000 RPMs. I absolutely love this car. It weighs in at 3,295 pounds, about 325 pounds lighter than my 435, and you definitely feel it. This car has the stock tune on it. It has an upgraded intercooler. He has a CPE exhaust waiting to be installed, and he has downpipes waiting to be installed. So right now, this car just sits with the intercooler, the upgraded charge pipe with diverter valves, and that is about it. Yes, look at this road, buttery smooth. Second gear for it, oh, this thing just pulls. This thing has great mid-range power. I remember my M54 not having power throughout the whole entire power band. What a genius idea to put an inline twin turbo motor in a car that weighs just under 3,300 pounds. There's no moonroof, so you're saving on weight reduction and lowering the center of gravity. It has a short shifter, it has a super easy and maneuverable clutch, heavy steering. I mean, what else could you ask for? I feel like you could take this car to the track on the stock tune and really enjoy it. Really wind out the car in every single gear. I don't think we need five, six, 700 horsepower in our M54s all the time. I think we need to calm down with the horsepower numbers and just enjoy the car for what it is for a while drive the hell out of it, and then once you reach that point of boredom, then go full bolt-on and go stage two and run an E30 map, run that for a while, and then when you get bored of that, upgrade the turbos if you want. But I, would, I could definitely see having this car forever. This car is just genius. It's so fun to drive. This car, it feels like you're in control of the car when you're driving it. My, when I jumped from my 135i to the 435, the 435i just felt huge. I can only imagine nowadays with the G80 and G82, how big and heavy those cars feel. I miss this. I think the F chassis would be the largest chassis that I would jump into. I haven't driven the G series, so I can't say anything about that, but the E series chassis is just so good. sideways there 
traction control. I should probably turn that off. Oh my gosh, this car just feels so good. <laughs> I encourage everybody to try out the E chassis. The E82 is one of my favorite cars. I know the, the looks of it have a love-hate relationship. I absolutely love it. I think it is such a creative design. I love the back end of this car with the tail lights and the lines of the trunk and the bumper. The 1M is obviously a lot better than your standard M Sport 135i. It has a quad tip exhaust, more of an aggressive rear diffuser, and the front bumper is probably one of my favorite elements about this car because it matches the wide fenders on this thing. So it comes stock with 245 tires in the front and 265 in the rear. This car actually has 275s on it, which wider is better in my opinion. We're running stock suspension for now, which isn't bad. The only thing I don't like about it is the monster ride height in the front. It's like a four finger gap in the front, which I don't think looks very good. And I think if you could, it's a simple fix. Just put some KWs on here, stiffen up the suspension, lower the center of gravity even more, and this thing would be perfect. I bet you the M2 competition and the 1M would give, that would be a great battle. I think the 1M, given that the M2 Comp has an S55 motor in it, has more power output and torque output, I think that you would have to do some upgrades to the 1M. But I would love to boost the N54 up to the 400 wheel horsepower mark and run that against a stock M2 Comp and just see how they feel. I also like the look of the M2 Competition. I think it looks great. I think they did a great job with the design of the 1M and the M2. The new G80 and G82 on the other hand, I don't know how that designer at BMW still has a job. I think it looks horrendous. I think, I like the new green color. I think that's a cool color, but even with those huge grills, I just, I can't get past it. I think the only way I would buy one of those cars is if it was a darker color, like charcoal gray or black, because it really hides those grills. The back end is decent. I mean, I like that's I like I like the back end more than the front end on that car, definitely. I know the maintenance on these N54s can be a bit daunting. I've had my I had mine for five years, so I went through everything with that car. I'm actually going to make another video in regards to all the maintenance that I did on my N54 because it's quite a long list. I'm actually shocked at how much went wrong with that car. Fortunately for me, I had an aftermarket warranty, so that covered a lot of the costs. But I think it would be helpful for people who are looking to get an M54. I think they get, they are attracted to the price of 335s and 135s nowadays. I mean, you can pick up a used 2008 135 and 335 for around 5K. Now, if the injectors, water pump, walnut blasting, what else? Spark plugs, coil packs, oil pan gasket, oil housing gasket, oil cooler housing gasket, all that stuff. I mean, I would think, plus modifications, I would think you're gonna put in another 10K easy with that car. So yeah, you're gonna pick up a cheap 335, 135 for 5K, but you're definitely gonna have to put in 10K worth of maintenance and modifications. That's kind of what I would budget off the top of my head. And to find a clean one that, that wasn't abused and taken care of is gonna be really difficult to do. Okay, so let's talk about a couple things that I wish this car had and two things that I dislike about it. The first thing is the roof. I appreciate that they didn't put a moon roof in it to save on weight and lower the center of gravity. But if this thing came with a carbon roof, I think that would have been the icing on the cake. The two things that I just can't stand about the car is this wheel gap. And obviously you can fix that, but how do you, that's almost a four finger wheel gap in the front. And I understand the 1M front bumper hangs lower than your standard 135i with the M Sport bumper, but come on BMW, that's, uh, that's kind of ridiculous. The second thing is the calipers. Okay, now let's talk about this and no one really talks about this. Let's get serious, come on. All right, question for BMW. How does my M Sport 135i, which is $12,000 cheaper than this car, come with six piston Brembo brakes in the front and four in the rear? And your 1M, your Apex Predator, has single piston calipers in the front and single piston in the rear. 
how do you drop the ball on your brakes? I mean, they're still really good, but looks wise and performance wise, I just don't get it. All right, the 1M is back with its original owner. It's been a fantastic week. My overall opinion on this car is it's perfect. I think it's the perfect weight distribution, perfect center of gravity, perfect power and potential with that N54 motor. I think the looks of the car is great. Although it's not for everybody, I think it looks fantastic. And I definitely see one of these in my future. Also, I want to mention if anybody has an E36, E46, or E92 M3, I would love to review your car. If you have an N54 single turbo, I'd love to review that, or an upgraded N55. I'm open to reviewing all builds, and I'm in the Southern California area. If you're near me, please uh, holler at me on YouTube or Instagram. I would love to do more of these videos and review your car. Thank you so much for tuning into my channel. Like, subscribe. See you next time.